It's, it's always great to be here with you and Betty. And, uh, you know, this is a book. I should tell you this before you start. Uh, I am not a single parent. I've never been a single parent. Uh, Sandy and I have reared five kids from 33 all the way down to 14. Uh, some people know our story. We had babies at 42 and 44 and 47 and 49. <laughs> Go ahead. I, how I see you laughing. I can see the camera starting to juggle back there. Yeah. Uh, but, and with that said, uh, the publisher came to me and said, Lehman, we want you to write a book on single parenting. And I said, I'm not a single parent. And they said, well, we know that, but uh, how many single parents have you helped over the years? And I said, well, um, uh, thousands. They said, write the book, fat boy. <laughs> But that was the exact that was the exact conversation. They they treat me with no respect. Write the book, fat boy. And so as as I got into this, I took a look at, at the books that were written on single parenting. And I'll tell you, the God's honest truth. I mean, speak the truth in love. I'd hate to have my name on some of the books I read. Wow. I thought they put the negative spin on a single mom and a single dad. Uh I can't imagine a tougher job than being a single mom. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we talk about the sacrifice that that single mom made. You know, I talk about in this book the fact that you as a single mom, and I, I pick on mom, it's a book for moms and single dads, but as we've already said, 84% of those kids live with mom, so mm. duh, yeah, sure. spend more attention with mom. But I, I try to promise her these things in the book, that if you'll just do a few of these things right, right, and make some tough decisions. Your son, your daughter, has as good a shot as a kid across the street with a white picket fence with mommy and daddy living under the same roof. And that's a pretty brazen statement yeah. because we know the statistics say that kids who grew up in single parent homes don't do as well. And that's where the title single parenting that really works comes from. How important is it for that single mom who's having to kind of roll up her sleeves and, and take on the uh, let's say the authority, discipline, responsibility that you'd like to have the, uh, the heavyweight figure in the home that says this is it and it looks like it bears more weight. How important is it for that mom to understand that saying no to a child and the child not getting their way is not bad for the child? It's, it's fundamentally important. Uh, she's got to give her son or her daughter vitamin N, which is no, and vitamin E, which is encouragement. and. I think one of the toughest sales in this book is when I try to look the reader in the eye through the written word and say, hey, single parent, you got to understand this. This isn't about you. It's not about you. It's about your kids. You're a mama bear, and you need to step up to the plate now, and you need to protect those little cubs. Hmm. And my promise to you is this. If you'll discipline those kids, and you'll love those kids, and you'll have positive expectations for those kids, and now here comes the hard part, and you won't date, and you won't remarry. Now, you go on with Katie Couric uh, or one of those other morning shows. Now she's graduated to the evening now, you know, but, uh, and you try to sell that to Americans, and they go, what, what did you say? Don't date? Don't you think I have a, a right to a life, Lehman? Yeah, you got a right to a life. And let me tell you what I think you ought to do. You ought to get three or four girlfriends you'd, you'd trust your life with and form a co-op that works like this. I'll watch your kids on Tuesday night so you can go to the gym if you'll watch my kids on Thursday night so I can do my laundry and do my shopping. Those kind of trade-offs. And see, I think it's a smart woman who says, okay, life's thrown me a hard curveball here. My husband left me, he lives three states away, my husband died unexpectedly, whatever the circumstances are. And a lot of the women I addressed in that book, they had never married. I mean, that's, that's, that's the way it is today. A lot so of what you're saying is if they get their focus on trying to repair a relationship, think they're going to correct all the challenges by going out and getting another relationship and oh, getting yes. married, <laughs> they may be, in fact, sacrificing the child, that although that person would be important, you can feel the shoes right now if you understand some things. Is right. that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Re refocus? Here's this woman. She's got two boys. So, you know, after the grief period that the, the husband has disappeared three states away and has lived with some chick, by the way, and living a completely different lifestyle than she is, and she's trying to be a godly woman, sure. okay? And everybody tells her, you know, you really need male influence on those boys. I don't know how you're going to do it. You know, she doesn't have to go to Walmart and buy a baseball mitt or a hockey stick or anything else. She needs to be a good mom. 
And she has to realize that as Lehman says, the real key punch in a family is between dad and daughter and mother and son. So as a mommy with two sons, she doesn't have to run off and find some surrogate male right away to replace dad who's taken off with some young thing, okay? Mm -hmm. What she has to be is a good mom. And my promise, my promise from my heart is if you're just a good mom, you got a chance of having a great kid. What if they're oh, girls, though? Excuse me, lady. That's the tougher one. That's the tougher one. Because it's the girls and mom that do this and the dads and the boys that do this in families in a very natural way. It's, it's quite frankly easier for the young single mom to raise boys than it is girls. And, and there are... There are all kinds of caveats as you go along, but I, what I would What does she do for the girl? I would be real careful about realizing that this young girl might end up uh, man-hungry, boy-hungry, because there's not a male in that family. Mm -hmm. So can the mother deal with that? Do you touch on oh, how yeah. she can help with that? Absolutely. But you don't let these kids run wild, obviously. You don't let them do their own thing. See, the, the single parent beats herself up. It's her fault. I'm the one that said, I do. I'm the one that married that slug, you know? <laughs> and so she, she takes that in, then she creates the guilt, and then she's big on saying no, no, no to the kids, and then the kids are kids, and they make her weak, and then she gives in. Mm -hmm. And it's the cycle that goes on over and over and over again. Well, what about that single mom that says, so, so I, I just give up, so to speak, my life. I don't think about me and my needs. Well, in that home where there's no, no male around? You know, the reality is... Because they, you, they feel like they need that. The reality, the reality is, if you got little kids, uh, I call them the ankle biter battalion, uh, they'll drain you of every physical strength and emotional strength you have. And you don't have much of a life at that point. Mm. You're going to put food on the table. You're going to work. Uh, one of the things I address in this book is, is child care. And what do you do? Do you put your kid in a kitty kennel? I wouldn't put my kid in a Kenny Kittle kitty kennel if you know what froze over. Hmm. Uh, I just wouldn't. I'd find well, how do you something. have a job and keep them too? Well, but you I mean, can, you got to have a pretty sophisticated book here to do see, all this. I think you can network. You, is this what you talk about? Or is this just what we talk about on TV? Is this in the I, book? It's in the book. I think this is what you network with people in the church about. There's people. There's older people who can care for young kids and, and, and give them a new purpose in life. you got to work. Well, why put them in a kitty kennel? Give us some more suggestions. Let me, well, as a matter of fact, let me, let me look at something right here that, that got me a, a while ago. <clears throat> and this is just really a... The three mistakes. Who, yeah, well, here's, here's just a question. Who's my daddy, mommy? Oh, that's that, a tough that, that, a lot of A, a lot of moms, James, don't know what to say. Because the reality is they don't know. Mm. Mm. And this is the point in life where I tell a parent, hey, you don't have to tell the kids everything, but you have to tell them something. Mm -hmm. And you have to owe up to the fact that your life, wow, you were rebellious, you thought you knew it all, you went off, and mm. bingo. Wow. Now, you try that one. I mean, th there's... I mean, you've, you've experienced some of that as a kid growing up. I know we've talked about that. That's tough. It's tough on the kid. Um... But there's three critical mistakes a single mom will make when life throws her a curveball. One, all right, we're moving. We're moving. That's the last thing you need to do is move. Your kids have gone through the trauma divorce. Don't move yet. Give it a good year till the dust settles. Number two. Well, you, you may be trying to distance yourself from your pain, but you're taking them away from their connectedness. Right. Yeah, it's like taking a little sapling out of the mm -hmm. ground and saying, oh, you'll do fine here, and then you'll do fine here. No. Wow. Let's settle down. Number two mistake is handing your kids over to your parents. Now, any port in a storm, many a single mom or dad has to move in with their parents on a short term. I'm not knocking that at all, but remember, you're the parent. You be the parent. And then number three is what I call hopping from one lily pad to the other because here's a single woman who meets a guy at church. Yeah. And Dr. Or no telling where else. Dr. Lehman, it's a God thing. He is, he is so kind. He took the kids on a picnic. Excuse me while I throw up, okay? Because yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard oh, this until it, it makes you sick. Right. But ten, ten, ten uh, months later, this prince that you met at the church, Mr. Wonderful, out of his mouth for the very first time, you hear the words, ribbit, ribbit. And he's not the prince. He's a slimy green frog who's been three-timing you. Oh. And my question is, what happens to the kids 
the boys who've adhered themselves to this man. God, I've seen and that's why so I much. say this is a book mm -hmm. that I think scratches where single moms and dads itch. It, Boy, it, it, I, it I, I'm hurting all over them. because I've seen this lived out before me with precious people. And I, I, I feel like you're, you're saying to the single parent here, they can have a soul connection, all right, with God without grabbing at what they think is the answer and coming up empty. Right. And I've watched it happen over and over. And I've actually watched people in churches, whether deliberately, whether they are predators or simply failing and weak themselves, find themselves preying on women who are in this situation, oh, finding yeah. connections that destroy another marriage, another home, other relationships, and other children's security I, James, because of these unholy bingo. connections. I, I've told 35-year-old women, emotionally, you're as vulnerable as a 15-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. If some guy came by and said anything complimentary to you, uh, mm -hmm. You would be, you'd be putty in that. Yeah, or to hand. your children, even in about your children, act like he's going to be that force stepping in. Well, there's a fine line there. I mean, God knows we need wise counsel. I feel like you're trying to provide that. Well, even the critics like the book, and critics don't always like books, but that's a good, solid book. You, do you guys know the story of Sonia Carson, Dr. Ben Carson's no. mom? Mm -hmm. Dr. Ben Carson, one of America's top pediatric neurosurgeons, okay, grew up in abject poverty in Detroit, Michigan, with his brother Curtis. His mother cleaned houses. She was a domestic. She made those two boys do book reports for her that were due every week, and they turned them in to mom. Mm. Not to school, to mom. She was the patrona, to <laughs> use the espanol. She was the, the heavy, the boss. You get them in here on mm -hmm. time. Well, Dr. Carson discovered something very unusual in junior high school. He discovered his mother couldn't read. Oh. She was illiterate. Wow. She was illiterate, oh. but she knew the way out of the ghetto was education power. And I love God that story. I've told that story so story. many times. And there's Dr. Carson, uh, a guy who loves God today, uh, who's married, successful. <laughs> and, and brilliant. And I tell any single mom watching, I'll tell you right now, if Sonia Carson can do it, she's cleaning houses, and uh, no dad in the house, you can do it. That's right. You know, I'm, I'm reflecting back and... Uh, my mother could use uh, proper English and sentence construction. And from the time I was six years old, every time I would use an incorrect word, speaking with the sentence structure not being proper, you and I, you and me, had to be said appropriately. You and I need to do this. We will do certain things and use the words appropriately. Mother would correct it. And I can remember looking back at my teens and my mother, why does she do this? She's driving me crazy. God knew, someday speaking properly, appropriately, correctly, would be very important for God's purpose in my life and my future. And my mother, she was a rock there in so many ways. And, and Dr. Lehman, you hit the nail on the head. I think we can point to those things. As you were saying that, what I was thinking of is the wall hanging that my mother put in my room that I hated with a passion, and it said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. I hated that sucker. <laughs> Kids would come over to play, and they'd see that thing on the wall, and I just wanted to cover it up and run. But I had a mother who loved me and who prayed for me every me day. And single mommies, be encouraged. You do get this mm -hmm. book. It's in the bookstores. And let me just pray for you, Father. For every single mom and Lord for dads who may even feel overlooked because they wish so much they had a wife. I've prayed with many men like this. They got their kids. Lord, they're trying to fill the shoes. The women trying to do it. God, give them grace. Lord, remove every feeling of failure and that they can't do it in inadequacy and let them know that you are so sufficient. And there are people like us who really care and in churches and neighbors who will care, who are sensitive and won't use them. And God, Dr. Lehman, people like him who care enough to share what they've learned and what they're learning. And God, I ask you to give strength to the single parents and let them know they can truly be a shelter in the storm for their children. They can build a solid foundation and establish it for their children to build their future on. They're not in a hopeless situation. They are, in fact, hope for their own children. Give them strength. Give them confidence. Give them wisdom in Jesus' name.